Welcome everyone uh, to Edigogo, a podcast where we feature interesting campaigns on our Indiegogo partner page. And today I'm with Georg Winkler, and he's the uh, project lead of Booksorber. So, Georg, thank you for taking the time. Okay, uh, thanks to you. Um, I'm very happy that you invited me uh, to your podcast so I can present my product. Great. So, in one, two sentences, what is Booksorber all about? Okay, basically, um, I have to say, um, until recently I've been a student uh, in physics and I was facing a quite common problem for many students that I had a lot of uh, uh, heavy and uh, big books that I wanted to digitize for mobile use because during my studies I was traveling a lot and I was studying in different places and I wanted to have all my stuff uh, ready for reference. Uh, almost everybody has uh, a laptop and, or an iPad or some other kind of mobile reading device. But uh, one thing which is really hard is uh, to digitize books you already own. I mean, there are not uh, many possibilities which are easy and work fast and uh, give you high quality output. So what I was trying to do is to come up with a solution to digitize your own uh, university books in a fashion that doesn't need heavy investment in some kind of specialized equipment uh, or a lot of investment time-wise in building your own uh, scanner uh, rig. So what I did is I programmed the software which uh, makes it possible that by only using your digital camera, a tripod, and a remote uh, trigger, you can easily photograph your entire book, which works really fast, and then you can put all this raw image material into this new software, BookSorber, uh, which does all the processing, which is quite involved because you have to separate, uh, the, automatically separate the different pages. You have to correct for uh, for warping, because uh, pages are never flat if you photograph a book. You, if you're just using a uh, simple light source, you have uneven illumination, you have to correct for that. You probably are using your fingers to hold the pages flat, you have to remove them as well. And so this software intends to do this all automatically, so that you maybe have a 500 pages book, you scan it in, let's say, 5 to 10 minutes, and then all this image material goes through the software and you get a nice PDF which you can use wherever you want in your PC or your tablet. Yeah, so I think what's really fascinating about this as uh, probably lots of us during our studies uh, spend lots of time in front of a photocopying machine and later when we got the first flatbed scanners we took hours and hours to scan some of the pages but um, your software really, it's not just that you, you take the scanned picture and then say, okay, we put it in a PDF, but you really transform the whole book into basically a, a really good looking ebook. And uh, I mean, what, what does it all take in the software to, to, to make this? Because, uh, as you said, if you have a really, really thick book, um, you have this bending on the image and it looks kind of weird and uh, I mean, how long did you work on it that it works like this? Yeah, I mean, I but first I have to say, um, as you said, you can just, you can just uh, take pictures of your book and you can maybe set up a batch process in a, um, in a program like Photoshop and you can do automatic cropping and you can do some adjustments on the tone curves so you get uh, a black text and white background, but the output uh, really won't be really satisfying. And because of all this kind of stuff, the text won't be straight. Um, you have uh, black spots uh, in places where there's not enough light and you will have um, very thin text in spots where there's more light. And if you try, for example, to run an... Um, uh, optical character recognition on this output, uh, you won't be happy and you, you won't be able to process it in 
in a satisfying way. So it really it really takes a lot um, of uh, involved algorithms um, to correct for all this. And I think I started working for it as a minor side project while I was still um, studying physics. And uh, now since the beginning of this year, I uh, got more involved in this project. And I think I have a working prototype, which I'm heavily using my, on my own. And I also have a few alpha testers who are also quite happy with, with the outcome. But it still, it still takes some, uh, some work um, to, to finish the product so that we can uh, really make it available commercially. And I would really like uh, other people to profit also by this solution. I mean, there's always... There's always uh, some kind of balance. If you if you have you you either have a very expensive hardware equipment, equipment and then the post processing step is uh, very easy, or you are using cheap ha hardware as um, I intend to do, and then you have to uh, spend more time um, on the on developing a working post processing scheme. Mm. And the software. Um does it run or will it run on, on, on I suppose, Windows and uh, then other operating systems as well? Yeah, um, the first version will be available on Windows, and but I intend uh, to port it to other platforms, so it will be also available on uh, Mac OS X and uh, Linux platforms shortly after that, so shortly after that, meaning, uh, let's say, uh, two or three weeks. So the code base is written in a way that it's easily portable. So uh, that's just a minor issue. Cool. And um, so how does the scanning process work? I have my book, and what do I need to scan it? Okay, so what you basically do is um, you just uh, take your book. Uh, you need some kind of uh, black background, so just a piece of black paper would be optimal. And then you set up your tripod, you put your camera on it, so it's uh, facing uh, downwards on the book. And then uh, one more thing you you probably will need is a remote trigger, which is uh, available for just a few bucks for most uh, camera types. And uh, yeah, and one more thing is a light source, so just a lamp from your desktop or maybe uh, some more powerful uh, uh, lamp, and then you just go ahead, you turn the page, you take a picture, you turn the page, you take a picture, and you can easily photograph about um, 80 pages per minute like this, and yeah, it doesn't need a lot of training, it's it's really, it's, it's a typical speed you can achieve, and uh, yeah, then you take, you take all your pictures from your SD card, you put it into the software, and from then on, it's uh, it's all automatic. And yeah, one one more thing, um, I'm, I'm I also focused on is if I heard heard it here that the software is running everything automatically, I'm immediately alarmed because automatics don't always work. So one thing I was also focusing on that if you have some kind of very tricky image material, for example, magazine material with uh, dark pictures going all the way to the border of the page. Uh, this might, uh, might be tricky, tricky for automatic detection of the page boundaries. But still, if this happens, you always have a manual, uh, a very efficient way for, for manually uh, selecting page boundaries. And so in the worst case, uh, it will take you an additional five minutes to process a book. All the other um, automatic steps, they are um, really solid and they work independently of uh, the book content. So you can also scan um, a book material which is very heavy on imagery and uh, which is um, glossy book material, for example. Nice. And uh, do I need to have a camera with a certain solution to do this? So let's say, if, I don't know, what's common these days, 10 megapixel? Yeah, so 10 to 12 megapixel would be fine. I mean, if you have a, a digital um, uh, high-end camera, a digital lens, uh, single lens reflex camera, 
Um, then, yeah, that's that's perfect. But you don't really need it if you have a high-end compact camera. That's also fine in terms of uh, resolution and quality of the optics. Um, they're often comparable. And uh, one one of the major drawbacks of compact cameras compared uh, to the more professional models is uh, the low light performance. And in this case, it's not a big issue because you are using artificial lighting, and if it's, it's strong enough, uh, then you you really you get good output from a high-end compact camera. And um, the file I get on which devices can I use it? So, of course, on laptops, um, but also then tablets like the iPad or, don't know, now the Nexus 7, if it comes to Europe one day. Yeah, so, I mean, the main format I was focusing on was uh, PDF, because um, my main uh, in, main purpose of the product for the first run was uh, digitizing books, which are like uh, university books, which are very heavy on formulas, on graphics, and that doesn't make sense to immediately um, produce a kind of ebook reader format where you only have only have the text. What I wanted is um, a, re a digital reproduction of the entire page, which is uh, which should be a small file format. It should be um, uh, that should be possible to perform uh, optical character recognition, so that you can search for your content and you can annotate. Um, your your content, so you can highlight uh, lines of text, and you can add uh, comments, and all this is uh, very conveniently integrated into the PDF format. So that's that's the main format I was focusing on, and basically all devices uh, support PDF files, so it's basically usable everywhere. Great, and um, are there any legal implications? So I suppose if I like uh, people always did, uh, make a copy for myself to work on it. Uh, I'm perfectly fine. Just don't upload the final file on file sharing websites. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. That's that's one thing I really wouldn't advertise. And it's really intended intended that if you if you own books you've bought your own uh, on your own. And mostly if those are universal textbooks. Uh, they are never really cheap. Mm -hmm. and if you don't want to buy another digital version, then you have the option now to just digitize your own book. And uh, probably um, that's, uh, that's a nice, uh, nice feature for, for, ma for many people. And, Absolutely. And another thing is if you are active in, uh, in teaching, I mean, your blog is all about teaching aids, then uh, you have fair use. You have the fair use principle, which in which you can uh, provide just uh, single chapters or single uh, single pages of the book as materials to your students, and that's uh, perfectly fine if you don't distribute it to distribute them to a more general public. If it's mm -hmm. just as a material for your course, then you can do that this um, as well. Great. So. What are the perks that people get when they contribute to BookSorber on Indiegogo? Yeah, okay. Um, the main thing I was focusing on is um, I thought, I mean, I was thinking how would I, um, what would I like myself? And if I uh, want to support a project, I want to see every penny of the money going into the project and uh, not being lost somewhere else. So I decided. Um, Maybe that's uh, not the regular way, but I decided not to offer T-shirts and uh, not to offer other gadgets, but uh, to give people a discounted price of the software for um, for taking the step and investing uh, um, some one or two months uh, ahead. So uh, the software is intended to sell for about uh, 29 uh, euros. Which uh, is a very good price. We have to say. Uh, I, I really, I started this project. I wanted to make it available, and I want to raise the funds uh, to to cover all the expenses in going commercial. Uh, and yeah, if if people like it and if it works out, I'm I'm happy with it. 
And I think uh, one shouldn't overprice software because, uh, I mean, it's it's a gadget you can try and you and which I hope will be useful. But um, I, I mean, there there will be sooner or later there will be hardware available for book scanning at, at price tag of uh, let's say 200 or 300 euros. Uh, and this and my solution should be something which is really uh, affordable for people who have the camera equipment uh, ready and where just the software piece is lacking. So mm. that's an affordable solution. Yeah, and I also saw in the comments that one of your uh, contributors said that it might be a great idea to then or have the software one day running on a smartphone or tablet. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting idea actually. Um, I mean, in terms of resolution and the optical quality, the high-end models of smartphones are getting better by the day. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, most people, basically everyone, owns a smartphone today, maybe, probably. And uh, one other advantage uh, would be that one could also implement uh, the automatic triggering for the picture taking into into the sm uh, smartphone software. So that maybe you just have a timed. You can take uh, pictures every one picture every second or so, or you can take a picture whenever uh, the camera sees that you stop moving your hands and you're holding the page still, and then it takes a picture. So triggered by motion more or less. That would be uh, a solution that one could uh, implement. This is also, I mean, I also tried this with a, with a um, compact camera where you can use a, a alternative firmware and where you can also implement this kind of, uh, this kind of mechanism and then you don't need an additional hardware component, uh, the remote trigger. Great. So, as you can probably see in the video here, we have a direct link to the Indiegogo project page. If BookSolver sounds like something you absolutely need to have, then please go there and contribute. As uh, Georg said, it's basically a pre-order for the software. And uh, well, Georg, thank you so much uh, that you took the time today and all the best for BookSolver. Okay, thanks a lot.